back at it again and unfortunately we have to talk about the speaker of the house race once again because um i'm getting angry like share comment and hit that subscribe button if you are new and let's dive in so in fact jordan is is doing worse than he did yesterday he had fewer votes than he did yesterday a spokesman for jordan said he's not dropping out we're going to keep quote going um do you, do you see jordan getting to 217 <coughs> anytime soon or do you think he's going to keep doing worse and worse i believe he's done he needs to say he needs to withdraw from this uh, he's going to lose more votes tomorrow i know it I already have i know who's going to cross over and change he doesn't have any pathway forward to 217 and there's two different reasons why you have some group that's worked with him going back 10 years and they've worked with him on appropriations uh, more senior folks where he's caught created a lot of chaos. I'm in the other camp where I don't like how he got here, right? We, he got here with a small number of Jordan backers who eight of them, for example, seven of them backed him, uh, but there was eight total that was vacated the chair in Kevin McCarthy. Our rule state in the Republican conference, you got to have 112, right? And they came in with eight It violated our rules. They followed the rules. You had to have 112. And then we voted for Steve Scalise, uh, and we, he got the majority vote. And then we had five Jordan backers say they would never vote for Steve, right, but would only vote for Jim Jordan right after Steve won. And also at the same time, Jim Jordan told everybody that he would only get behind Steve if he had 217 votes. That is not our rules. When, in our rules, if you get the majority, you get behind that person, whoever has the majority, and you vote together on the floor. And so. That, that, was, that, that was the straw that broke my camel's back there when those five Jordan folks said they would never vote for Steve right after the election, but only for Jim. And Steve was there and he didn't speak up, which makes, means that he is somewhat complicit. You can't play a game where I'm the only guy playing by the rules and the other guy is not. It's not American. We believe in fairness and that the law applies to everybody. And that wasn't the case with a small group of individuals here. So there you had uh, Representative Don Bacon, who's kind of the, the leader of the group against uh, Jim Jordan. He also had spoke about um, his wife receiving texts and phone calls to uh, her phone, right? <laughs> I'm going to see if I can actually put up that video really quickly here while we're... Um, while we're sitting here so yeah here we have the text message that don bacon's wife allegedly received so here it says uh why is your husband causing chaos by not supporting jim jordan i thought he was a team player and his wife texts back who is this oh now you have nothing to say uh then the person replied your husband will not hold any political office ever again what a disappointment and failure he is and she replied he has more courage than you you won't put uh, your name to your statements. Now, I'm not advocating for messaging people's spouses, right? The spouse typically has nothing to do with what the other is doing, okay? I I, I would say don't message people's uh, significant others. That, that, that's a little, that, that, that's a little over the top in my humble opinion, okay? But what I do agree with is giving Don Bacon a phone call. I do agree with that. I don't think there's any harm in that. Now, obviously, be respectful, okay? But let them know how you really feel. Let them know how you really feel. And Don Bacon's not the only person, of course. Uh, check out this clip. I, I remember talking to you when, when this all happened with McCarthy. You were, you were enraged by this Gates gang, whatever you want to call them. Um, but now, ironically, it, it's, it's like you're part of a very similar gang in this moment. Your group is the one holding this up. Uh, you're a part of a small faction that's keeping... Uh, Jim Jordan from the speakership uh, when, when even people like I mean Jordan stood with McCarthy in that moment let's remind everybody of that Jordan did not try to pull McCarthy down he stayed with McCarthy mm -hmm. in that moment right and now he's up there and he has McCarthy's support um, I, I guess my question is how are you any different than the eight that took down McCarthy well I'm different from the eight because I didn't take I didn't go against the wishes of the conference actually the conference wanted Steve Scalise to be our nominee but Steve Scalise knew that he couldn't get all the votes because, ironically, some Jordan people decided that they weren't going to vote for Steve Scalise. And so, uh, you know, 
Uh, this is, uh, don't, don't tell me, you know, what's good for, for me, for thee is not good for me, mm -hmm. uh, which is exactly what's happening here. And the same people that voted McCarthy out are the biggest pushers of, uh, of Jordan. So there are no saints here. I don't claim to be a saint. And, uh, but I just think that the right thing is to get Kevin McCarthy back in that seat. He's our leader. Uh, he's had many more. Yeah, he's got much so more votes gonna, than, uh, than Jim Jordan. Will you put has. him up then? I've, I mean, been are you guys this, gonna... I've been in the same spot for two weeks. I've been yeah. in the same spot for I mean, two I got, weeks. I only have 20 seconds left. Yeah. Are, are you going to put McCarthy up? Is somebody going to, is, is no there going to be a vote there? When, is that going to happen? I mean, how much longer are we going to go through this? Well, the first thing that has to happen is uh, is that Jim Jordan has to figure out he's not going to get there, and he's not going to get there. And the faster that he comes to that realization, and the faster we can move on. And yes, you know, one of us, some of us, will put McCarthy up and say, "Hey, we need you back, and let's see if he gets the votes from the conference to make him our designee." Remember, he's only going to be probably around five votes short. Okay. So five of the eight okay. need to change their their opinion Understood. and get him back as speaker. And yeah. So there you have uh, Representative Carlos uh, G Jimenez. Jimenez, I, I can't, I don't remember how to pronounce his name. I'm sure, I'm butchering it. I apologize. But uh, there you have him. He is out of Florida. So um, where is Ron DeSantis? I'm just asking because we got a few folks out of Florida who aren't doing the right thing, in my humble opinion. Ron DeSantis calls himself a leader. He wants to be the president of the country. So where's your leadership, Ron? Why aren't you making a phone call asking these folks, what's going on? Why don't you have Jim Jordan in there? What you doing? Huh? See, time and time again, Ron DeSantis drops the ball. But, you know, forget about Ron DeSantis. He's not winning anyway. Here's Ken Buck. Listen to what he has to say. Oh, he did not vote for Congressman Jim Jordan, <coughs> instead voting for Tom Emmer. Well, I guess my first question is, do you really want Tom Emmer to be speaker? No, I don't. I don't like Tom Emmer. I figured this would be the worst job in America. Mike Rowe would not want to do this for his TV show. This is so, a terrible job. Okay, so just to underscore that, you voted for somebody because you don't like them. I, I voted for somebody because I wasn't going to vote for Jim Jordan. Yeah, but, but you don't They aren't him. even serious right now. He just threw out a name, just any name. Because I'm just not going to vote for Jim Jordan. I'm just not going to vote for Jim Jordan. Now, out of this entire situation came an incredible clip, okay, from an individual that I personally do not like anymore. Uh, you guys might remember uh, who this individual is, but I'm going to play the clip so you can, well, I'm going to have to bleep it out because he kind of curses, but I'll run, roll the clip. Babin. Jim Jordan. Jordan, Bacon, McCarthy. McCarthy. Dumb so there you had uh, someone voting for McCarthy and Brian Kilmeade from Fox News, who I'm sure you guys remember, I'm, I'm not a fan of Brian Kilmeade anymore. My goodness, goodness gracious. But he's even frustrated with people not voting for Jim Jordan at this point. He didn't realize his mic was still on. And uh, after he, after the individual voted for McCarthy, he called him a dumb, um, what's a PG way to say it? A dumb butt. Okay, we'll say that. But he didn't say butt. He said the A word. Um, <laughs> Which is absolutely incredible. You know, it's good to see. But there's also somebody else that I had some issues with that actually said the right thing recently. Check it out. Parents, we've stood up for a strong border. We have a Senate, Democrats, and a president that won't work with us. We have a thin majority, and we're exposing this family feud for the entire country to see. That's okay. We have the worst form of government except for all the others. Everybody stay calm and carry on. We have a job to do. I'm not backing down. We're going to change this town or bust. Mm -hmm. If my colleagues think they're going to roll over me or roll over Jim Jordan, they're out of their mind. If they somehow get Jim to, you know, back off, I think Jim should carry this all the way through. Yeah. We'll be next. We'll stand up and fight for change. We're not going to agree to more of the same. So Chip Roy, wow, says he's not backing down from the Jim Jordan vote. And, uh, you know, Chip Roy came out and was super angry about Matt Gates, you know, um, getting rid of Kevin McCarthy. So I had some issues with Chip Roy because I thought Chip Roy was one of the boys 
thought he was a part of the squad. Well, not part. I shouldn't say squad. Not not part of the AOC led squad. No, but you know, part of the crew. Yeah. I like I, I like to hear him saying, "Hey, we not backing down." I love to hear that, and I love to see Jim Jordan not backing down as well. If I'm Jim Jordan, I'm staying up there. If if it takes thirty votes, we gonna be here. Okay, we gonna be here. Thirty votes. I ain't quitting. Mm -mm. Absolutely not. So I love what Chip Roy said there. Uh, it's 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 change or bust. Okay, change or bust. Well, here is a um, list of the twenty-two Republicans that did not vote for jim jordan so here we go we got don bacon who we saw earlier uh in the video out of nebraska we got uh Vern buchanan out of florida ken buck colorado anthony I, I don't know how to say the last name out of new york mario out of florida you know two two florida people ron DeSantis, where you at where, where, where you at ron i'm just saying you, you got a couple folks that um you know, are are aren't doing the thing, okay? Uh uh Jake, or yeah, I think that's how you say that, out of Texas, and Drew out of Georgia. Next up, Andrew, New York, Tony, Texas, Carlos, another Florida person, uh Kay out of Texas, John James, Michigan, uh Mike Kelly, Pennsylvania, Jen, I don't know how to say that last name, out of Virginia, Nick out of New York. And I believe there is one more slide here. Mike out of New York. John Rutherford out of Florida. There's four Florida folks. Four. Someone out of Iowa. Uh, Mike, Idaho. Steve Womack, Arkansas. And Pete out of Minnesota. So if you live in any of those districts, really any, any of those states, um, you know what to do. Give them a phone call. Let them know how you feel about things, because honestly, this this the pressure campaign actually has worked, because if you guys remember, Mike Rogers, I believe his name it was, was one of the individuals that initially said he wasn't going to. But because of the grassroots uh, support for Jim Jordan, he then flipped. So keep giving them a phone call. Keep ringing their phones up. Keep leaving a voicemail if they don't answer. Uh, and, and, and let them know how you really feel. But of course, you know, Democrats are panicking that Jim Jordan could possibly become speaker, which is why I am positive that Jim Jordan is the right guy. He's a terrible member of Congress in terms of what Congress is, right? He's a terrible lawmaker. The concern is that not only is he bad at his job, but that he doesn't really uh, support our our uh, institutions of, of the government. I mean, he tried to overthrow the government. Sounded like she uh, wanted to say our agenda. <laughs> He's a bad guy. These guys are violent. <laughs> It's a terrible guy. No, he's actually a great guy, which is why you're panicking uh, and why we like him. You know, he knows or you know he's not for the BS. You know that. You know he's not going to just follow along um, with the establishment. That's why you don't like him. Okay? And that's why we want him. All right? And if, if, if we got more people like Chip Roy out there that are not backing down, then uh, I think I think we'll come out on top. But there is a threat to um, us coming out on top. And that is these uh, 22 or so Republicans who refuse to vote yes. And I think um, their, their phone should be ringing like no other. Their phone should be ringing like crazy. Going insane. Bonkers. Phone should be ringing nonstop. Okay? Keep calling keep calling be respectful right don't call people's wives or people's husbands because we did have jen on there okay call their personal office okay don't don't don't, don't do no crazy stuff all right don't do nothing crazy we don't, we don't need to get wild and crazy like the left does we keep it peaceful but uh give them a piece of your mind you know let them know this stuff is unacceptable this stuff is crazy, man. And then you had, you know, folks like um, Carlos who, <laughs> oh, man, who got called out because, you know, he initially tried to say, well, these Republicans, these five Republicans went against the conference. And yeah, well, now you're going against the conference. So what does that mean? <laughs> 
goodness gracious man we got to get jim jordan in there the fact that the establishment is fighting so hard the fact that you have so many republicans going against jim jordan lets me know jim jordan is the right guy he's most definitely the right guy because not only do you have the left going against jim jordan and losing their absolute minds and calling jim jordan you know a, a fascist and a, a threat to democracy and all of this other stuff but you also have republicans mainly rhinos of course you know Republicans in name only, uh, that are doing the exact same thing. Tells me Jim Jordan's the right guy. You know, any any time the establishment comes out and goes against the person, that tells me that that person's the right person. I like that guy or gal, right? In my humble opinion. But as always, what do y'all think? Have you made a phone call to your representative? Have you? Be honest now be honest let me know in the comment section below like share comment hit that subscribe button before you go peace and love i'm out